Thank you, Brittany. You were fabulous. <laughs> This morning, we have two beautiful ladies delivering the message. First up is charming and elegant Miss Safani Bryan. Good morning, everyone. The theme for today is, what is your purpose in life? Now, I'm sure many of us here today have questioned ourselves. What is my purpose in life? Have I fulfilled my purpose? And how will I know when my purpose is fulfilled? I know I have. Many times I have sat and wondered if I truly am living my life to its fullest purpose and if I am achieving all that I need to. When receiving the theme for today, a song quickly came to mind. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. It's called Show Me by a well-known artist, John Legend. It starts out almost like a prayer, where the person is asking for a sign and an answer to life. It states, life has to have meaning. Show me the light, show me the way, which I interpret it as the persona asking for an indication of their purpose in life, a sign that will show whether he or she is on the right path to fulfilling their purpose. Towards the end of the song, the persona says, won't spend my life waiting to die. Enjoy the life I'm living. Which in my interpretation, here the persona realizes that when she or he finds the things that they, need to in, that they enjoy and focus on their happiness and fulfillment of life, then he or she can't go wrong. So today, I'm not here to tell you what your purpose is in life but my aim is to advise you on how I think you can find your purpose. First, I think it's very important that you find something that you are passionate about, something that you enjoy doing because it makes you feel good and accomplished, something that brings complete joy to your life. For example, my mother, who I adore so much, is, very, is a very passionate woman. She has this great passion for art and design. And everything she does, her artistic skills and talents that she has discovered is put to use. Everything she does brings out at least a small bit of her artistic side, and it is almost inspiring to watch her in action. She has found her passion, and I have no doubt that she will find her purpose if she hasn't already. The next best thing to do after finding your passion is to find what suits you and where you fit in. This allows you to explore the world and learn more about yourself in the process. Learning your likes, your dislikes, things that you can do, and things that you, didn't, that you didn't know how to do before, and things that you're not so good at. This is good for finding yourself, which is very important when it comes to discovering your purpose. Being sure of yourself and knowing who you are and where you want to be only makes finding your purpose 10 times easier, as you now become the guide to not only your purpose, but also to your life. Which brings me to my next point. Create a plan to finding your purpose. After finding your passion and finding yourself, it is then time to find your purpose. Once you have discovered yourself and start doing the things that you are passionate about and doing the things that make you happy, you have created a path that will lead you to your destination, that will lead you to your purpose. Along the road to finding your purpose, it is also very important to maintain a spiritual balance in your life. Rick Warren wrote a book called The Purpose Driven Divine, which I believe is a good read. One of the chapters focuses on balancing your life. It points out the importance of evaluating your spiritual health, as well as recording your progress to finding your purpose and passing on what you have learned to others, as I hope I'm fulfilling this very moment by sharing my, me by sharing my message about what I've learned about finding my purpose. As with everything in life, you may, f you may hit a few obstacles which on the road to finding your purpose, you may hit a few obstacles while on the road to finding your purpose, but it's your responsibility to keep your eye on your goal. 
The only thing that can keep you from finding your purpose or even living a purposeful life is you. You are, not, you are your only limit and the biggest obstacle that you will face. And this is why it is important to maintain a spiritual balance in your life. This spiritual balance will result in you getting through your obstacles and give you the push you need to maintain on the path to finding your purpose. Ephesians 5 verse 15 says, Live life with a due sense of responsibility, not as those who do not know the meaning. It's your responsibility to find your purpose. No one can do it for you. And once you have come to know your passion, to know yourself, and learn to keep a spiritual balance in your life, you are sure to find your purpose. Namaste. And now we welcome Racine Williams to, jo to give us her message. Good morning, Temple family and friends. When Auntie Carmen first asked me about speaking in church, I was a little bit skeptical. Now, I've been at the temple since I was nine or 10 years old, and I've participated in services before. And as some of you may know, working in and on TV, I'm not the least bit shy, but for some reason, the idea of this talk daunted me. Then Auntie Carmen told me the theme of the talk and the service, which is finding your purpose. And it was then that I started praying that she'd ask somebody else to talk. So I texted my best friend about it, and she said, well, yeah, that makes sense. I guess you found yours. And I texted her back, are you kidding? I don't even own a matching pair of socks, much less have my purpose figured out. So in my mind, I thought, do people really think that in 26 years of life, I have this figured out? A lot of the time, I'm just winging it. And the truth is that a lot of us really are. So I told a coworker about this talk, and she, she asked a little bit more about the temple. And so I told her, and she goes, oh, that's the reason you're always so happy. I, I thought it was just all the sweets that you eat. But it's true. When you go through your life and you, you, know, pr you practice gratitude and you approach situations with a positive attitude, people really think that you do have it figured out. So I sat down, and I thought about it. And I realized that when you consider your purpose in life and God's purpose for you, the two can actually be quite different. If you look at the Bible, there are countless examples of young and old alike trying to figure out their purpose. Remember this, God's ultimate purpose for you, as he states in the Bible, is for you to honor him and reflect his image in everything that you do. Romans 8:28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good, all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. At the very least, we should be doing that. But while here on earth, sometimes the path isn't so clear. When it comes to your purpose, I'm going to admit that I definitely can't tell everybody here what theirs is. Everybody's journey is different. I've had the great fortune of knowing what I've wanted to do and the impact I wanted to make since I was very young. But a lot of people, and the best ones that I know, still haven't quite found theirs. What I can tell you, however, is a couple of things that can likely hinder you from finding your purpose. One hindrance is thinking that we only have one purpose, and I don't think that this is the case. Along the road, you'll find that you may have several purposes, and as you fulfill one, your soul will give birth to another. When I was five, my purpose was probably concentrating on being a good big sister to the newborn badness that most of you know as my charming and cunning little brother, Luke. And when I was 15, my whole life's mission was just trying to get through high school alive. Now at 26, I want to change the world, whatever that means and whatever that takes. Don't get locked into thinking that your life only has one definitive meaning and that you failed if you don't meet just that. The universe gives us back what we put in, and as we evolve with our thoughts and our actions and fulfill one dream, one goal, or follow one path, the universe definitely opens other doors. The second thing that can keep you from finding your purpose is paying too much attention to the purpose of others. Moving back to Jamaica, I find this a lot. People love sus, admittedly me included. You know, we, all, we all like our sus sometimes. The country is small and people love a good story, especially if it makes them feel better about their own lives. But it's really hard to drive straight when your eyes are on another person's lane. In other words, our lives often intertwine, but your purpose is yours and nobody else's. In Jamaican lingo, what is few can be unfeel. 
So far, I can only speak for my teens and 20s, but with Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, iMessage, WhatsApp, it's really easy to get caught in other people's lives. Don't. Keep your eyes on the prize, no matter how far or near. What's even more distracting is listening to others' opinions of how you should live your life. I'm going to tell a story, and, and the story goes, there was once a man who netted three trout from a mountain stream and carefully placed them side by side on a thick patch of grass. Before he removed them from the water, they were like liquid ballet in motion, fluid, graceful, vibrant, alive. After he netted them, it was another story. As the trout lay on the grass, they were motionless. Their eyes were fixed. They gasped for air and they looked and acted stupid. The man noticed they seemed unhappy, so he talked to them, hoping that his encouragement would change them. Little fish, don't be so sad. You like the grass. Just try it out for a while. No movement, no response, no change. A few more seconds passed. The man's neighbor walked by. He said, hey, Bob, come and check out these fish. Bob sauntered over, and the man explained that he was certain that the fish could adjust. I'm sure they could prosper here on the grass. Don't you agree? Why not, Bob replied. So he also tried to tell the fish that it would be a good idea if they learned to like the grass. After all, he liked the grass, so why shouldn't they? Still, the fish didn't blink. They just lay there looking dumber by the second. Finally, a little boy approached and exclaimed, what are you doing? Put them back. They can't be all they've been created to be when they are out of the water. Finally convinced, the man carefully placed each fish back in the stream. After splashing for a split second, all three swam away effortlessly. Again, it was like liquid ballet. What ease, what grace, what beauty. In that moment, the man realized that no matter how long the fish lay there, they would never adjust to the grass and they would never be satisfied, no matter how much he or anyone else told them otherwise. Even if the fish tried to convince themselves that they could learn to like the grass, they never would. They would never prosper. In fact, they would eventually die. You can't be all you're intended to be by looking at where others are and trying to be there too. Even those with the best intentions are not always right. And parents, I will caution you that it is very important that as your child tries to find their purpose, that you don't try to convince them that they'll like the grass when they're meant to swim gracefully in the water. <laughs> The final thing that can throw you off of finding your purpose is being afraid to shine. And I speak from personal experience on this one. I'm sure you've all heard this phrase. Marion Williamson once said that our deepest fear is, that, is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. A great many of us will never discover our true purpose because we are afraid of the whispers of those who are watching. We're afraid of offending others with the brightness of our light. But if we are truly to align with the spirit, the brightest light of all, we can't be afraid of blinding others. There's a young pop star who before a show was uh, caught with, a, with her mic on, repeating a phrase to herself. She didn't know anyone could hear her, but before she took the stage, she repeated over and over, I am enough. And I watched the video and I said to myself, I'm gonna try that. And it's actually changed my world a lot. So before I attempt anything that I'm scared of, or sometimes just even a day that looks like it's going to be bad, I say to myself, I am enough. So I want you guys to actually try it. We can try it right now. So first, I want you to say it softly to yourself, and then I want you to say it in a confident voice, and then I actually want you to shout it. So after three, we're going to start. One, two, three. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. And it feels really good when you shout it. <laughs> Mommy isn't here, so I'm by myself at the house, and I shout, I am enough, all the time. I hope people don't think I'm crazy. But it's important in our quest for purpose that we know that we are enough and that we let our talents be seen and heard. Again, in looking for your purpose, or even after you've found your, what your purpose is to be, you won't get there if you limit yourself to one goal. You won't get there if you're too concerned with the lives of others or if you're listening too much to what others think or if you are afraid of shining your light. And again, in all this, at the end of the day, remember, God's goal for you is just to be your very best. Namaste.